In this video, I want to show you why and how to use Nginx as a proxy for browser sync and for your local backend. When you're doing front-end development, where you also need a backend, then browser sync is actually a very helpful technique to be able to reload things faster. So this is a very helpful technology to um, connect to the browser by a WebSocket um, connection and then to reload it instantly. What BrowserSync can do, it has an option for using a proxy so you can both use local files such as HTML, CSS, uh, JS files and also a backend that just gets proxied via the same port. However, for me, with uh, recently a more complex front-end project that didn't quite work because of some service end events that aren't proxied properly by Browser Sync, and also if you need some more advanced options of controlling how to do the proxying to your backend with regards to HTTP headers and so on, it might be more helpful to use Nginx or any other uh, proxy server, for example, running in a Docker container. What we can do in this regard is that Imagine we have an Nginx running, such as on port 3000, that's actually the default port for uh, browser sync. And that just proxies our actual browser sync that then is only responsible for um, serving the uh, static local files that we develop with, like JS, HTML files and so on, and our backend. And then with some routing configuration, we just uh, define whether we want to uh, go to our local backend or to that browser sync instance. We do this with localhost and different ports. That's the easiest option. Of course, you can adapt it. Um, if you have an Nginx configuration, you have the full power available here. How that works is as follows that if we use this from an Nginx perspective, it's actually very easy um, to set it up. We only need um, to use a Docker run. So this um, works something sim similar to uh, the following two scripts I want to show you. So this is just this line is important, um, docker run, where we say please run an nginx with that configuration. So if we use this local configuration as a volume, we don't even need to build another docker image with a docker file. And then we open up a browser and use browser sync here in this regard to run with a specific port. But our browser gets pointed to port 3000, that is the port that nginx runs with. So similar to this, that here Nginx runs with um, 3000 port, that is where we point our browser to, and then we can develop here and also at the same time access our backend. How this works now in Nginx with the configuration here is as follows, that's the Nginx configuration. This looks um, a little bit overwhelming at the first sight, but it's actually quite straightforward. Our server listens at port uh, 3000 and we have three rounding configurations. Um, first one says which part goes to browser sync. These are all here in my example, HTML, CSS, JS files, images, and you might add it to some other uh, things that just go to 3001, like local host. And the same is true for the WebSocket configuration. We just need some more headers here for this to work. So this is how to establish WebSockets that that is what browser sync needs in order to do the update. And all the rest basically goes to the backend that is 8080 port for us. So this is basically this configuration. Of course, you can adapt it and enhance it based on your needs, especially when you have some other service and events some WebSockets that might need some other proxy configuration here. That's just quite straightforward to do this. Then in order to start it up here, I just run the script, which as you have seen, runs a Docker container, but also already starts up my browser sync. And then here, this uh, starts it up in such a way, now let's reload, now that's an empty page, that this now can be edited with my front end project. So this serves the HTML index file, let's open it up side by side, which right now is empty, so I can just create some default um, HTML page like this, let's say here document, so that's just empty, and then of course H1 hello world, and I save it, and then once I reload this here, you see that this is there. So if I now uh, save and update it, I see the changes immediately being reflected. And that's actually the nice story about this browser sync technology. But on the other hand, this also now works with my backend. So if I would now go and say, well, localhost 8080, and then, for example, I have a coffee uh, backend running, this is what my backend usually looks like. So I can 
instantiate this here, but also now via port 3000, this works as well. So here you see I actually have a different output, but I can control the um, headers and it works with port 3000 as well. So this is now being proxied, which is very helpful for this local development because while I'm developing here, I can also use both this front end project and the back end regardless of how it will be built later on. So assuming I say I do have something like enhanced for a list, hello world, one, two, three, this will be enhanced. And now what I can also do, I can change the CSS here, for example, I can say, I'll change the font size of this, for instance, for that, of course, I need to add uh, my style sheet here. For example, then I can change this here and so on and so forth. So with this, you just see the nice front end coding experience where you then have the changes being reflected very quickly. But also now the interesting thing is from the front end, I can use the back end with the same proxy manner, which is why I did this in the first place to have the same domain. So that's still on localhost 3000, I can access my back end. And in case I need to send some cookies and everything, I don't get some security exceptions. So with this regard, I can say, and this is now just really to showcase the point, I can, um, I can say window uh, location origin, for example, please go on this now slash coffee, which is um, accessing the back end. And then let's switch this over so you can see, uh, see this a little bit better. Uh, fetch this one. And then um, if that is the case for the res uh, response, this should be a textual response. And once I get uh, the string back, please do some fancy logic to add uh, the string here. So for example, create an um, create element, something like a span at the end, let's say. That should be an element for the inner text. Should, should say from back end, we got this string here. And then append it to the body or something like this. And now if I change this um, here and save, then you will see that I made a mistake here. And now I got the response from a backend here as well. So I can use the backend in the same way, like um, I can use without this proxy. And if we have a look at the network um, connection here, what happens actually is that you can see it does the request to the backend also with port 3000 and then um, forwards that and it uses it in the same way from the same domain perspective. So this works and we can use the backend also from the front end with that same URL. This is especially helpful if we use some other mechanisms to access our backend that might not be possible with the plain a proxy uh, mechanism from browser sync. This is why I use this nginx as a reverse proxy sort of upfront. For example, if we have server sent events, or if we have some other HTTP headers that we need to set or to send, or some other means that just don't work quite well with browser sync. This was the case for me. This is why I had this solution. And with this very minimal setup of this nginx configuration and the Docker container, this is very pragmatic to set it up to run that locally and to use this port configuration here in localhost host network mode um, in a way that is just accessible quite easily and still you get the best of both worlds of having the quick uh, browser sync uh, refresh available when you do this development. I hope this was interesting and helpful for you to watch. If so, I would really appreciate a like and thank you very much for watching.